Hey, everybody. I'm back. Welcome to another episode of A Face for Radio. I am your host, the host, not your host, the host of the show. My name is Andrew Latham. If you didn't already know what you do, it's been a while. How you guys been? Raise your hands. If you've been good, raise your hand. If you've been bad, I uh, that's not really what I want to say. But, uh, God, what's it been? Three weeks? Not a whole lot's been going on with me. Went uh, down south to Vejas. And then went to a bunch of dumps that people love because they're a bunch of idiots. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk a little bit about what it's like being a tour guide for Japanese people. We'll discuss whether or not I'm a racist. Uh, hint, I am. And uh, we'll talk about some other stuff. I just really... I've already c- complained about this for quite a bit. So I don't really have much left to go on. I do have a couple stupid questions they asked me. I'm sure once I get on it... Um, it'll all be good. But... Uh, oh, we have to go over the question last time that I haven't talked about it all. What was it? Like pizza face versus... What was it? Ba, 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 ba. Here it is. This is from a long time ago. This is the would you... Ra- oh, deal breaker maybe? Some of you dum-dums didn't understand that you can't say neither because you're stupid. Um, ba, 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 ba. Oh. Maybe it's... Oh! Here it is. This is from, damn, a month ago, April 15th. I knew this is, well, it's, it's, this is a hard one. So the deal breaker is big yellow white heads all over their face or horrible plaque on the teeth that makes it look like they only eat yellow cake. Ugh. 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 Yeah, that's, ugh. Oh man, whiteheads. Whiteheads are fun to pop. You know what? It's whiteheads because there's nothing entertaining about yellow cake teeth. I mean, nothing. Whiteheads, it is disgusting, but they are fun to uh, to squeeze out. Now, you don't really want your significant other covered in them, but it's something to do. It's like bubble bubble wrap, you know? For their face. And gross stuff comes out. Hmm. Yeah, so that one won. Their other ones, are they're both gross, though. We're going to get some new ones. I know some people sent me some emails, but I haven't looked at them yet because I've been too busy being pissed off because of my dumb, dumb customers asking me stupid questions all day. All right, so let's, let's get into that because that's really all I'm going to be able to talk about this time around. But and if you didn't know, my profession, other than being... A failure to student is I'm a tour guide for Japanese customers. Uh, I'm an independent contractor. I work for several different companies. And by several, I mean three. And uh, it sounds a lot more glamorous than it is. Um, People always tell me how great of a job it is. Those people are complete idiots, and I'll tell you why. So I went down to Vegas. I worked for 10 days straight. And I went to the following attractions. Antelope Canyon, Horseshoe Bend, Monument Valley, Grand Canyon, and uh, I went to Sedona a couple times. Now, going to all of those places except Grand Canyon and Sedona, just on vacation, probably wouldn't be too bad. They are kind of cool. But I'm working. I'm not on vacation when I'm working. That's because I'm working. And work and vacation are different. I have Japanese customers. And to the two, possibly one Japanese person who's listening to this, uh, I'm sorry I'm going to offend you. But I respect you. You're not like these people. And you're you're not. Well, we're not going to get into it. But anyways, you know who you are. Everyone else, shut up. But I've been doing this for seven years. And by seven years, I mean 
mostly through the summers, but now and then again, because I don't have my priorities straight until now, I would do it during the school year because I was a complete idiot. But now I've learned. You make enough mistakes in life, you learn. That's what I did. What we'll see. But anyways, uh, I go to these places. I've probably, I swear, I've been to Monument Valley, Grand Canyon, uh, Antelope Canyon, Horseshoe Bend. Those four, and did I say Grand Canyon and Grand Canyon? At least 200, 250 times. And I'm over it. I get it. Uh, rocks and shit like that. Nobody cares. But here's the point. Every three days, I get a group of new customers who feel the need to be complete idiots all day. And you might be saying to yourself, Andrew, you are such a prick. These people come here and they don't know anything and they rely on you to give them a good experience. Well, let me explain to you some of the complete, just unfound stupidness that I'm not maybe this is all tourists maybe it's just not to Japanese people maybe it's every single person that goes on vacation just puts their head so far up their ass that they can't think anymore but I'm going to try and stop swearing and by try and stop swearing what I really mean is swear more but I was in Yellowstone last year and a woman she called me and she said one of my customers she called me and said I can't flush the toilet. Can you send a whatchamajigger janitor? Not a janitor. Fixer guy. Uh, repairman. To the room to fix my toilet. And I said, yeah, I'll come up. Because there's a good chance she's stupid. I'm not going to bother a repairman to, you know, do that. Because it's irritating. So I went up there and she, she said that she couldn't flush the toilet. So, uh, heaven forbid you shut the toilet. But she had you know, pissed what appeared to be Mountain Dew because heaven forbid you drink something. Uh, and t- but So it's there and I've closed the lid and I, I flushed the toilet and it worked. And she and she, she just didn't push down hard enough because she possesses no upper body strength because she's an idiot. And then she kind of... And, and, and so and in Japanese culture, you can't be a burden. It's meiwaku kaketu. And you can't... Kakeru uh, Mewaku. So, instead of kind of laughing it off and saying, oh, I just wasn't strong enough, she said, wow, these American toilets, they're just not as good as Japanese ones. And at that moment, I thought about crushing her skull in the sink and having my way with her dead body. But instead, I decided to go back to my room and go to sleep. Um, I am not going to translate menus for you because I'm not going to explain to you what gravy is because you're not going to want it. You're just going to want the salmon anyways. So stop effing asking me what the F gravy is. Uh, so there's that. But on this tour, you know, we didn't have, I didn't have too many stupid people. I did. I was asked a couple dumb question. Uh, uh, let's get to it. Let's see. But it was one guy. One guy asked stupid questions and then one guy... And I so I went on four different tours. I had uh, I don't know 20, 24, 25 different customers total. But anyways, but but here they are. So we're out at Monument Valley, and this is the Colorado Plateau. So it's a high desert. Uh, as if anyone who's listening to this gives a shit about any of that. But it had snowed the night before in the mountains. It was cold, and so the clouds were low. And the guy just loses his mind over low clouds. And he's like, why are the clouds so low? And I was like, I don't know, man. There's just... It's where the clouds are. Uh, now, that might be a good question. Why are the clouds so low? Why do, why do clouds become low? Uh, how do you say that in English? Why do the clouds come closer to the ground instead of way up high in the sky? Like pie. Um... And he was like, does this happen all the time? And I said, no, not all the time. Just times like this. Uh, like, if I could speak Japanese and explain to you why clouds were low, do you think I'd be a tour guide? I'd be an effing meteorologist in Japan. Telling you dumbasses when it's going to rain. Which, is, wait, let me, here, surprise, all the time. Okay, that's when it's going to rain. Um, 
Then he had the the. Uh, now here's another thing too. When people, this is true of all people, but when they go somewhere new, when they're on vacation, mostly when they go somewhere new, they ask the question. They just think out. They just think with their. They think out loud. Of course, they think with their brains, but some. But they think out loud. So, whatever question pops into their head, just boom out of their mouth. This guy said, "Why is it snowing?" So I answered him. I said, "Well, it's cold outside and." rained and then the rain turned to snow and there you go now i don't know what kind of answer he was expecting but that's what i said and everyone else kind of laughs and he's like oh okay well you know what the hell do you want me to say why is it snowing i don't know jackass why do you think it's snowing because it's below freezing you dumb idiot oh and then i had toward this one guy everything i said he repeated in the form of a question to me we were talking about gun laws, I think. He, he said, is it legal to walk around with a gun? Uh, and I said, it depends on the state, but yeah, most states you can you can do that. And there's different ways to do it. And I talked about it a little bit, and he goes, so what you're saying is that the state laws are different, and in some states you can, and some to some states you can. I said, yeah, asshole, what did I just say? Now, I know my Japanese wasn't, my Japanese isn't perfect by any means, but I'm clearly able to communicate. Um, Because no one else in the car was asking stupid questions. They all understood everything. They always met up at the right place at the right time. Like, but every single thing I said, every single effing thing I said, he repeated back to me in the form of a question. I think he was just one of those nerd guys. Uh, The otakus. For those of you, the four of you who know what the hell I'm talking about. But uh, then I got this gem. Are rainbows rare? It was raining in Vegas the last day of my last tour. And this mom, I was taking him to the Monte Carlo. And she goes, and there were rainbows. There was a rainbow. And she says, are rainbows rare? And I said, well, not when it rains, they're not. And she was like... Like what? What do you? I don't understand. Does it are? Does it are there not rainbows in Japan? There's rainbows in Japan. There's a light and and water, and that's how you get a rainbow. So I think most people. I mean, ninety nine percent of the people in this world are you can't trust them, and they're stupid, untrustworthy, and stupid. Those are two things you just. frustrating but another frustrating part about this and i can talk about this openly and uh i so i go to the navajo reservation the navajo nation quite a bit for tour that's where monument valley is that's where antelope canyon is and in order and our tours utilize navajo run tour companies and so i have a lot of interactions with the navajo now the Navajo tour guides at Antelope Canyon are I've pretty much never I've never been disappointed. They've always done a very good job and they're all they all are very competent individuals. Uh I'm assuming. I don't care. I just want to leave as soon as we get there. Yeah. You know, there's a bear. Ooh, uh, there's a bear in the canyon. Spirit of the buffalo. But uh When you head out to Monument Valley, you pass through a town called Cayenta, or Cayenta, depending on who you talk to. And I remember the first time I drove through there, I couldn't believe that this this kind of living situation existed in the United States of America. I mean, poverty. Uh, I watched alcoholics stumble through the road, and you'd have to stop and let them, you know, stumble across the road so you didn't hit them. Um, And... I remember one time I was discussing parts like the poverty I saw on the Navajo Nation and someone said this person was a rather well-to-do individual who um, didn't have really any grasp of economics, which is exactly why these, why the in, most na- native uh, populations are living well below the poverty line is because of economics and some so sociology, but we'll to get into that. But she said, yeah, it's just so horrible what we did to them. And then I said, well, I didn't do anything to them. And who's we? 
because when all that shit went down, my ancestors were in a valley in northern Utah trying not to starve to death. That's what they were working on. They weren't raping and pillaging a bunch of Navajos. So, so part of a stupid liberal's argument on the plight of the Native Americans or Indian Americans or whatever the hell we're supposed to call them is because we took, quote unquote, we, as in, I'm going to say we, as the American people, and it's more of the American government, but through treaties and force and war, their land was taken because we were superior and continue to be a superior culture. And that's what happens in the world. Superior cultures take over inferior cultures. Um, whether that's right or wrong is hard to say. It's just what happens. So anyways, we the F Spanish first met them and they taught them how to use turquoise and silver and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So then we had the Trail of Tears, not the Trail of Tears, the Long Walk, which is where, uh, I think it was Fremont or Carson, I can't remember. But they forced all the Navajo out of their land, sent them to New Mexico. And then a couple of years later, we gave them back a big portion of their land because we looked at it and said, this place sucks ass. Uh, we're not going to use anything for it. Okay, so so we did that. And the Navajo and the Indian reservation system is really complicated because state laws don't have effect, but federal laws have effect and they have their own governments. But the federal government still tells them what they can and can't do. So... So let's, 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 we'll do one thing that I'll talk about why it's messed up. So on the Navajo Nation, the land is communally owned. That means that you don't own the land that you reside on. Uh, with, even if you have a home, you do not own the land. You basically get permission from the Navajo government to build a house. But you don't even build a house because you can't buy the land. If you don't own the land, a, a bank will not loan you money. They won't give you a mortgage. Because if you don't own the land and you don't make your mortgage payments, they can't foreclose on the home because you don't own the land. So, the Navajo Nation provides shitty government housing. Or you can live in a trailer or a hogan, which is a dirt home. So there's one problem. Uh, basically what you're doing is you're, you're limiting people's ability to innovate and... Uh, purchase land and utilize that in a good way. Now, here's the other problem. There's something called grazing rights. And different families have different areas in of which they're allowed to graze their... They're basically sheep. You might see cows every now and then, but it's mostly sheep. And there's two families that actually have grazing rights within Monument Valley, which is a Navajo Nation tribal park, which means the Navajo Nation... Uh, oversees it and takes care of it, okay? But the Jacksons and the Blacks have grazing rights within Monument Valley. So, when a movie or a TV studio or whoever wants to film whatever in there, they have to talk to the Jacksons and the Blacks, and they pay the Jacksons and the Blacks um, lots of money to film in Monument Valley, okay? And so the Jacksons and the Blacks get real rich because they have the grazing rights there. Now, that's not fair, because why do they have it and other families don't? doesn't make any sense. If that land could be bought, if, it, if, if the Jacksons or the Blacks could actually... Because the thing, they don't own it. They were just given it. They were grazing rights. They didn't buy it. They didn't work hard, earn a lot of money, invest in the property, and then now they're, now they're getting a return on their investment... It's just luck of the luck of the draw. And now you've got all these other Navajos living in poverty because they have shitty land and nobody wants to film there. And now we're supposed to all be communal living? Like, that's bullcrap. So that's one reason why on the Navajo reservation you see poverty is communal, this idea of communal land. Okay? If you can't own your um, means of production then what incentive do you have to make it more efficient or better? 
If someone gives you a home and you rely totally on them for that, what the hell do you care? How the, how the house... Okay, I'm enough preaching. What, what am I, 19 minutes in, 20 minutes? Yeah. I got nothing to talk about. I wonder how many of you are going to quit right now. But yeah, uh, I'm going to Yellowstone later, and that and that'll be okay. Um, I saw an article today on the news: uh, a father and son of a foreign nation. I bet they're Chinese. It sounds like something a Chinese. They probably wanted to eat the bison. But anyways, this father and son they found they saw this little baby bison buffalo walking around. They thought it was cold. So they put it in their minivan and then they drove to a ranger station and said, we need to talk to a ranger because we found this baby buffalo hanging out. It's cold. So the ranger said, hey, we got to go put it back. And I think he either did give him a fine or said or said he was going to. But why is everyone so stupid? Don't they know that? Those baby bisons know how to make fires and they'll be okay. God damn. But I'm going to Yellowstone for like half of June. And I know there's going to be a bunch of dumb questions there. I'm going to have to hear 100 million times about how they want to get in the hot springs and how come America, how come you're not allowed in the hot springs there in Yellowstone and how come Americans don't go in hot springs? It's like, I don't know. I, because we don't. That's why. How come you have slanty eyes and eat with sticks? What's with that? Why don't I ask you that? What's going on? So, oh, we got to get to if I'm racist or not. And I am not racist. I do not discriminate based on race. I discriminate based on sex. If you're a woman, you're incapable. No, I'm just kidding. No, uh... I am a culturist. I discriminate based upon culture. There are some cultures in this world that I despise and don't think should be allowed to exist on this planet. But uh, uh, one of them rhymes with blind knees and the people that come from the country that rhymes with vagina. Uh, they've got some... Uh, They've got some quirks about them that I don't much care for, like the spitting in the restaurant, or washing your hands with a bottle of water inside the restaurant, or not understanding what a line is, or you're loud and rude and don't know how to close your fat, ugly pie hole, other things like that. But uh, but you know what? You know what? Let's spend a couple of minutes for some for some travel tips and then we'll get into a quick how to but I know a lot of you it's summer your kids are out of school you're going to be seeing a lot of pictures on Instagram your wife is going to nag you and say you don't go anywhere you don't do anything and uh, you don't really want to put a lot of effort into it because she's just going to bitch 45 minutes into the drive about how much longer there is so let me help you travel the southwest which is, so tip number one, don't go. It's a waste of time. And everywhere you want to go will not be as good as what you think it is, okay? You need to lower your expectations about what the Grand Canyon looks like, about what Moab is. Moab sucks. If you think Moab is great, that means you're stupid. Um, you know, the places that are cool are places nobody goes to because everyone is stupid. So... So here, here's if you want to travel in Utah for a road trip, here's three places you should go. Number one, Bryce Canyon. Bryce Canyon is awesome because getting there from Las Vegas or Salt Lake City or pretty much anywhere else is a very beautiful drive. Uh, it's not a lot of traffic either, so it's easy to get to. I mean, it takes a while, but... Uh, that's just how it is. Okay, but it's a nice drive. High elevation, so it's nice and cool. You're not going to be hot. Not a lot of people go there, so it's going to be secluded, quiet. If you like hiking, there's hiking to do. If you just want to look at some pretty scenery and then chill, you can do that. 
but I'd recommend Bryce Canyon. Now let me tell you where not to go. That's way overrated. Arches National Park. Arches sucks. That place is boring, it's hot, and it's filled with idiots who think that arches are cool. They're not cool. They're not. There's nothing cool about it at all. So don't go to arches. Okay. Number two place I would recommend would be um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Capital Reef would be nice. I, just because for similar reasons to Bryce. It's really far away, but the drive there from Bryce is a really nice drive. Don't go there from... No, actually, you can do that too, but yeah. Capital Reef. There's not a lot of people there. Not a lot of people go there. There's a place there, town got Paul, what, blah, 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 blah. Town there called Fruta or Frusia. And the park service manages an orchard there that has like peaches and apples. And you can go in there and pick peaches and apples and pay a nominal fee. Chicks love that. Um, the whole point of a vacation with a woman is to entertain her so she won't bother you. Uh, because you just want to hang out at home because you're a man. That's just how it works. You know? Uh... But she has to post pictures to Instagram and she has to pretend that she's having a good time even though she realizes it's a huge waste of time. So, Number two place not to go in Utah would be Zion National Park. Not in the summer. If you're going to go, go in the winter when it's not filled with stupid Europeans flapping their giant German gums about blah, 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 blah. And then you have to ride the tram. And the tram... Uh, not the tram, the shuttle. The shuttle bus used to have this, like, informative, uh, I don't know, what's it called? Recording that would play, and you could actually learn some cool things about Zion Canyon. Now it's, uh, oh, I'm a Native American, and I used to live here, and now the white people pushed me out because I didn't know how to invent the wheel, and it was 1850 effing, mother effing two. Okay. If you don't have the wheel by then, then what the hell, man? What's going on? I heard someone say that they didn't need it. That's why the Native Americans didn't need it. And that's why they didn't have the wheel. So what the hell does that mean? You didn't need the wheel. I don't need Google Fiber. That doesn't mean I can't have it. Didn't need the wheel. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my whole life. But uh, if you're going to go to Zion Canyon, wait until like oct late October, November. It'll cool down. No crowds. And there's some cool stuff to do there. But don't go in the summer because you're going to have to park outside the town. You're going to have to ride the shuttle into the, the park, pay, wait in line for like 45 minutes to an hour to ride the shuttle to go to the various stops and get off and do all the stuff. I mean, it's going to take so much longer. It's going to suck. That's not a vacation. Vacations are supposed to be fun. Not you getting breathed on by some mouth breather on the shuttle bus that is a prick. So don't go there in the summer. Go in the fall or winter. And number three place you should go in Utah. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Mm, ah, Bear Lake. Bear Lake's pretty nice. Again. Actually, no. Bear Lake is okay. There's just two. There's a lot of cool drives. But, like, I like driving. Driving is fun. Get to listen to music, get to drink stuff. I get to push my opinions on the passenger if I get one, which I won't. But uh, but you know what? We're gonna. This is gonna be a quick one. But let's get to the how-to of the day. It's warming up. It's warming up, guys, guys and gals. It's warming up. You know what that means? It means bonfire season's coming up. If you live in the desert, you probably don't know what a bonfire is because we're never allowed to light anything on fire unless it's a cigarette. But a bonfire is when a group of people gather together and then light a fire and then piss you off the whole night while you're there. If you live amongst Mormons or people in Utah, or worse yet, Mormons in Utah. You will be subjected to these bonfires. People will invite you. You'll say, you know what, I got plans. 
and they'll say, what? And you'll say, not hanging out with you, you skanky fat hoe. But you won't say that. You'll say, oh, I'm going to uh, study. And then they catch you in your web of lies. So then you have to go. I'm going to give you some tips on how to survive a bonfire. Number one, don't go. Do everything you can to get out of it. Because the it's the, the lighting things on fire is fun. But the problem is that the bonfire, that's not going to happen. Because the people there won't know how to light it on fire. They will bring wet wood or green wood that won't light. They won't bring enough wood. Um, they just think that they can go into the woods and take... But it's it's you can't burn that wood. So, you know, tell them you have diarrhea or that your mom's in the hospital or lies that they can't prove you're lying, okay? So, you know, get rid of your self-esteem and just say that you have, that you're painting the sides of your toilet brown tonight. Because of some Cafe Rio you ate. Okay. So there's tip number one. Tip number two. Assume a... Now, you're probably going to go to a bonfire with people you don't really know that well too. Because people like to get to know each other in the middle of the night. In a cold place. Huddling around a fire. Talking about stupid crap. But tip number two is... If you're going with people you don't know... Make a character and just be that character because you're never going to see them again and it doesn't matter what their opinion is of you. You know, you can choose to be like someone with autism and you just say weird stuff and, you know, weird them out. Plus, the plus side is they'll never invite you again. So, that's a good one. That's a fun thing to do. Uh, tip number three. Bring things to light on fire to the bonfire. This can include... Uh, cans of gasoline, uh, evidence, uh, that girl's panties you stole that now she's kind of suspected like, whoa, what's going on? How come he knows now when my period is? Things like that, you know. Bring things to burn. Burning things is fun, like orphanages. Uh, fireworks are always fun. You know, cats. That you've wrapped in duct tape. Those are other things that are nice to throw in the fire. Uh, tip tip number four. Do not bring any food. Because no one else will. And they will mooch off you the whole night. Okay, Don't bring anything for s'mores. Because then you're going to have to get this line of. Oh have you ever put Starburst? I like to put Starburst in mine. I like to heat up my Starburst. Blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. No. Buddy cares. You have to listen to that all night. It's like going to Wendy's and watching some sicko dip their fries in their frosty, because, and then talk about it. If if they do it and then don't talk about it, that's that's fine. But yeah, so that's tip number. What is that? Five, four. Don't bring any food, and then don't eat anyone else's food, because then they're gonna, you know. Well, you got to give me five bucks because you ate two of my s'mores. I won't kill your family tonight. How does that sound? Brad. Uh, so be careful about that at the bonfire. And tip number 812, take your own car. Do not carpool, okay? You're going to be somewhere without reception. So you can't text your friend and say, hey, I need you to call me now and tell me I need to come get you. Because that's not going to work. Take your own car and say, you know what, guys? I can go for an hour, but after that, i got to pick up my friend at the airport. Or I have to, uh, I don't know, what else? what else is there to do? vacuum my room I don't know but you can't carpool because then you rely on someone else to get you out of there as soon as they gather around that massage circle it's time to GTFO you don't want to get ringworm okay 
from some dude or chick with dirty, gross fingernails getting up all in your neck. And massages don't even feel good. Some strangers jerking off my shoulders. Yeah, that feels great. Wonderful. Love it. Um, take your own car. Better yet, if you don't have a car, say, you know what, I don't have a car, I can't go. And they'll go, no, you can carpool with us. And you go, you know what, I have bad gas. I don't want to fart up your car. I'm sorry. The other nice part, too, is getting to the bonfire will take like a half hour. So then you're only there for ten minutes, then you get, then you got to bounce. Time to go home and watch Seinfeld by yourself, in, alone in your room, the way God intended you to be. Because you're super pessimistic and cynical in life, and no one will ever love you. But if you utilize these steps, these tips, this summer, you will su- you will have a successful bonfire experience. Okay. We'll probably do a chapter two on this because bonfires also have some seedy characters. You know, they have guitar guy. They have even worse ukulele guy. They have the girl that planned it and is super disappointed it didn't happen the way she wanted to. You have the awkward bros that are going to try and flirt and hit on every single girl that's there. And then you have the girls that are, you know, taking a break dating themselves and stuff like that. So we'll cover those people in the next section of the bonfire. (coughs) Oh, excuse me. Tutorial. So... If you do have to go to one of these and you encounter one of these people, you'll know what to do. It's like a Pokemon, you know. You fight a rock type, you get to pull out your water types. Oh shit, it's a grass type. Pull out your fire type. Hot diggity damn. It's a, it's a not psychotic. What is it? What's Abracadam? Abracazam. What kind of type is he? Psychic. You know, the only types that are good against psychic type are ghost type. Okay? In order to defeat Guitar Guy, you have to know, you have to know what to do. You have to know what to say. In order to make High Expectation Girl not vent to you all night, you've got to know what to say. And if you're a girl and you've got some bro flirting with you, you got to know what to do. Okay? And I love the four people that continue to listen to this show. And I want you to be happy. You know who you are. But it's good to be back. Expect some more episodes. Expect some more planned stuff. And uh, I'm pretty sure I'll think of some other stuff to talk about soon. But, yeah. Enjoy. It's This is Monday. Enjoy it, guys. Have a good week. And I will talk to you. Later.